Kevin Solo and I have been going back and forth for the last couple of days about this whole thing as it pertains to women and respect and patriarchy and what the modern woman does and doesn't want to participate in and why they don't want to participate in it. Uh, again, originally, the, you know, as I said in my previous video, the complaints were men not having their shit together. And now the complaints have evolved into uh, essentially women wanting to be recognized the same way as men are in the same capacity. Uh, you know, that's really what a lot of this feminism is about. As I stated before, privilege is not power. And many of these women want power. And we can define power in several ways. Uh, but ultimately, it comes down to them being recognized in the exact same manner as a man is recognized. And, you know, Captain Solo and myself, we've gone back and forth about it, thought about it. You know, what does that mean? What is that going to mean for men? Right. I was watching this video from, you know, intellectual. What is it? Intellectual media, intellectual media. She's a pretty motherfucker, by the way. But anyway, um, you know, she I, the, the video that I posted on my community tab, you know, again, same talking point, same type of Tina war talking points. You know, uh, patriarchy is evil. You all are just trying to be imitation white men and putting yourself at the top. Um, Freaking, what did she say? What did she consider uh, homosexual? What the hell? Considered um, being anti, what did she say? Anti, what is it, homophobic or something like that? Considering that to be uh, a part of the uh, misogynistic, Eurocentric patriarchy, which is kind of weird to me because I'm like, I'd argue that black men are more quote unquote homophobic in all of their hyper masculinity, um, you know, which was, you know, given our position and everything else, you know, the poverty and the conditions, it, it facilitates hyper masculinity where I would agree that there is less balance you know, when it comes to black men and, and, you know, in especially those in poverty, when it comes to ideas and concepts of, you know, manhood, which is for them is narrowly focused about around violence and aggression. But, uh, you know, she labeled uh, misogyny and homophobia as, you know, this, you know, a European Eurocentric thing in on top of trying to, you know, insult uh, black men with the notion that we're just trying to be imitation white men. But what I asked Cap, I was like, what is with all this gay shit, man? Like, black women weren't talking this shit when I came online, and even the lead up before I came online. Like, they just, like, black women didn't co sign the gay shit. You know, before it was niggas is on the down low, and then they had the little, you know, the Oprah came out, you know, and talking on it, they're not available, and you know, you know, the reason why black women were catching AIDS was because the niggas on the down low, right? That's what the whole conversation was. And then over the last, I'd say, 10 years or so, you know, it's like you see this push of all these, you know, sexually confused women that 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 even if they're not uh, LGBTQ, you know, they advocate for LGP. And I'm like, what is with this? Now, you know, a couple of years ago, I hit the nail on the head with the fact that, you know, what do they have in common? You know, smash the patriarchy. So they come together and they form Voltron on that front. Right. But I'm like, but I don't I still don't I get the smash the patriarchy component. But I'm like, but why are you all co-signing it as much as they co-sign? You know, these these black feminists and these black modern women and whatnot. Like, why do they co-sign it? you know, as much. And it goes back to what was said in my last video, which actually, you know, if I didn't say it in that video, that came from Captain Solo. You know, when we were having the discussion, you know, he just said that um, the, hold on a second, because I'm losing my train of thought because I'm zigzagging between traffic. 
that the reason, hold on, it'll come to me. The reason is that, you know, two systems cannot occupy the same space. Two value systems cannot occupy the same space because they won't be valued equally. You know, this is where the alternative lifestyle, you know, that's what the big push is to get the alternative lifestyles to be valued equally. And like I said, if I'm a, I don't even have to be an evangelical Christian. I'm just saying if I'm a heteronormative cisgendered black man and my whole belief system is get married, raise a family, you know, raise your children so that your daughter can go and partner with, or your son can go partner with, you know, man, uh, you know, your daughter partner with a man that it was given patriarchal orientation that your, and that your son goes off and finds a woman that was given patriarchal orientation. And then again, now we're talking about expanding and having this community of men who all have the same orientation and understand the assignment. You know, I know I've been noticing that on like Instagram and TikTok, you know, people, you know, things like where animals are doing shit and they're like, he understood the assignment. And I'm like, yeah, that's what I'm looking for. Other black men and women who understand the assignment. And what we're finding out is a lot of these folks, they don't understand the assignment. As a matter of fact, they're bucking and pushing back against the assignment. Saying that the assignment is problematic. And, you know, when it comes to black people, all you got to do is label it, you know, white supremacist or something like that. And then it suddenly becomes a negative and then everybody's willing to toss it out. But that's not even the main reason why they're tossing it out. And I'm going to get to that in a second. But I just want to talk about this not not equalizing shit. Now, people think that not equalizing, you know, uh not equalizing something to what you're on is, you know, that's, it's just a, it's just an idea. It's just a thought. It's, it's how I want to put it. It's just, you know, some, something that can be changed if we just change your idea. And it's like, yes and no. And the reason I say yes and no, it's like, example, I'm a big ass man. I'm probably in, you know, the top like 1% in terms of size and in terms of strength. When I walk into a room, I've had people say it to my face, you know, that I have presence. I've had people say, you know, that, you know, you know, you're a big ass dude, you know, like these sorts of things. And Cap came up with the best example of like how shit really goes down. Female cops. Now, I've never been hemmed up by a female cop or had a female cop try it. Most female cops, I think, would be smart enough to realize that, you know, they don't have the strength to check a man like that. But the thing is, is a lot of women that are female cops, they go into being a cop because, you know, a lot of them have a chip on their shoulder about something. They Again, we're back to the wanting to be recognized like a man is recognized. And part of the issue is it's like. Okay, if a female cop tells me to do something, I'm not doing it off. Of, I'm not doing it because I fear her. I'm not doing it because I'm sizing her up and saying to myself, man, I don't know, man. She she looked like she could do some damage. I'm not saying that. I'll say that about a man. If a cop is equally as big as me, right, which is rare. But I'm just saying I know that a man is going to come with a substantially more uh, power and force and resistance if I were to resist. So it's a whole different ball game. But I do I recognize or respect the fact that, you know, she's a cop. She's obviously a part of this infrastructure of police officers. She has a gun, right? But without all of that, if we were just out here butt-ass naked, like, chick, I'm not doing what you're saying just off of the strength of you. I'm doing it because you're a part of this police organization. And, you know, the, the, I'm trying to think of another, another, um, there's another like short example I was going to give. It's like, oh, I've seen, you all have seen these videos every so often. There's a video of a cop and a civilian getting into it, a male cop and a civilian getting into it. 
And it, it, it's again, the egos start flying. It's male on male. And you'll hear the guy say, man, why don't you take these handcuffs off? Take that badge off and let's see. Let's scrap it out and see who's who's who, who's what, what, what. Right. And then sometimes the cops take them up on their offer. You know what I mean? And then it just turns into like this little street fight brawl. The cops are standing off to the side. The boys is not. Nah, let them fight. Let them fight. Let them scrap it up. Let them fight. Let them fight. You know what I mean? Because the cops like, nah, I got to show you whether I got this badge on or not. I can still whoop your ass. Don't think that I'm some punk ass bitch or whatever just because I got a badge. You know what I mean? And I'm hiding behind the infrastructure. I will fuck you up. Right. And so you'll see that. We obviously know that would never go down. There would never be a physical challenge to a female police officer and and then everybody would consider it mutual combat. Then they wouldn't. I said this before about why there's weight classes. I remember uh, um, um, Michael Jai White got in trouble because he made a statement about the fact that he could beat Bruce Lee. He's like, I'm 100 pounds heavier than Bruce Lee. Of course I could beat Bruce Lee. And a lot of people got upset with him about him saying that, you know, because the man is dead, can't defend himself, all that stuff. You know what I mean? But, you know, at its core, there's a lot of truth to that. You know, that that's why there's weight classes You know, people brought up the Gracies and and MMA and stuff like that. Yeah, if you got a lot of skill, if a person has a lot of skill, they can they can defeat a bigger opponent. And maybe Bruce Lee had that skill. But seriously speaking, we don't we don't see that like that boxing match. Mike Tyson, we knew had a ton of skill, but Mike Tyson couldn't get close enough to Lennox Lewis to really do the type of damage that he does. Not that Mike Tyson hasn't fought in taller boxers but Lennox Lewis for him being the height that he was and the size that he was he was like a just a bigger version of Mike Tyson it was almost no way for him to to win that fight with 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 you know Lennox Lewis just throwing jabs just throwing jab Mike Tyson couldn't get in so when a woman tries to come off like you know like she's a dude that does not sit well with a lot of men. And it doesn't just sit well with with men because of, oh, he's just misogynistic. Like, no, like the, the whole concept of like she's talking to him as though she can beat his ass. It's, it's, it's just a it's just a problem. It's just and, and then again, that whole male ego, not just with, you know, the interaction with women, but also the interaction with other men. You know, like if a, if a, if other men witness a man getting beat up by a woman, it's like, first off, she's not supposed to be able to beat your ass. And if she can beat your ass, you know what I'm saying? Then I already know that you're not a challenge for me. Right. Because that's always going off in the background or that's always going on in the background. You know, so. This is like areas that just women just don't understand. Like I said, y'all are gonna have to take the shit up with God. You know, when it comes to some of this, you know, some of this inequality stuff. The other thing is, you know, women participate in their own, you know, so-called inequality because they'll sit there and they'll try to convince a man that he should operate differently. And then when that man operates differently and, and subscribes to ideals of feminism and tries to, you know, operate within the parameters of shit truly being equal, women like to jump back and forth. When they can't, you know, do something. Well, if you were a real man, you know, you get that or or, or they'll label a man weak, you know, uh, 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 for the same reason. And I'm like, that's a great deal of why men don't go off in that direction. Going back to what we talked about, about a man cannot ungay. A woman can go off, mess with a woman, you know, be done with the. Are you done with that? OK. And a man will scoop her up and be in a relationship with her. Hell, he might even think, hey, I can maybe I can get a threesome out of this. But most women, despite all the nonsense that you hear about dating a transgender man, most women who even will advocate for that aren't interested in dating a man that has dated a transgender woman. As far as they're concerned, he's still gay. You know, look no further than that guy that went up there in the church talking about I'm not as gays no more. I like women, 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 women. Go look, go look at him. 
women do not look at him as though he's some sort of masculine man or man to be with. Despite what he said, it's like, nah, nigga, you, you were messing with dudes, you're gay. That's all there is to it. There, 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 there is no, there is no bisexual, pansexual, everything. You gay, like that's just what it is. You're gay. And what else? There was something else I was going to say, you know, about this whole thing. Oh, patriarchy. And that whole, you know, giving recognition. Um. Like I said, even same thing with the female cop. It's like there's there's just no way to do that. There's no way to do that. And 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 the thing is is if like okay, let's say a woman is like the best saleswoman in the, the department. I've met women like that. They're pharmaceutical sales reps. They're doing way better than the men are. They're killing it, you know. And men will acknowledge that. Men will acknowledge the skills. But that doesn't mean that they're going to want to be with you. And it doesn't mean that it makes the woman more desirable. Like as though men are like if a woman is a seven and she's the best salesman person for whatever on the East Coast, that doesn't make her go from, you know, a, a seven to a ten. It doesn't make her more attractive in the eyes of man of men. You know, and this is like evolutionary, evolutionary hard wiring. This is not just some shit that, oh, well, you all can you all should just think differently and find these attributes attractive. And we, we don't. We don't. We like pretty women, young women. That's what we like. And women who are in shape. That's what we like. That's what moves me. That's what turns me on. I frankly, I don't give a fuck what a woman's career is. You know, what I mean, if any, the more money she makes, the more I'm like, shit, she might very well be out of my league. You see what I'm saying? Like, that's how men think. Because men don't want to be in that subordinate position. Men don't want to be in, in the in the in, in the passenger seat because we know everything that is going to be said about being in a role. Hell, that's the that's the very argument that sisters make about about why they don't want to submit to black men. You've been subordinated by another group of men. You're the white man's bitch. You all don't control this. You all don't control that. So if if that's what you're saying collectively about the group of black men, right, because slavery happened and Jim Crow happened and mass incarceration happened and, 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 and we didn't do nothing about it, right? If, if that's how you feel about the collective, then I'm like, why are you trying to convince men to ride and play a subordinate position? You see, like, and, and and so, and this is going on for, two, you know, so long. And I'm telling you what really fucked it up. A lot of these brothers in the 70s and the 80s that once women, you know, the, the markets changed and women started to work and women started making money, dudes started staying with women, especially guys that caught felonies. They stayed with the women, had babies with the women, had no real power in the relationship. And they, and, and unfortunately, Women, black women got it in their mind that that this is how shit is supposed to be. This this ass backwards orientation the black community has. They got it in their mind that this is the way that it's supposed to be. And now you have a younger generation, you know, the remnants of it. Uh, that, you know, for the for the handful, for the 25 percent of black children that are born in, you know, two parent households where the father is there. And and, and, and let's, you know cut that, cut that number in half. So now we're down to like 12.5, you know, for the, uh, percent for the men that are actually, you know, pre, you know, not only present as fathers, but actually, you know, fulfill, you know, in, instill a very strong patriarchal mindset or those that just pick it up, pick it up from elsewhere by looking and observing other communities and say, Hey, I want to be that. Hey, I want to be the guy that, you know, in that episode from Bill Cosby, you know, that, 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 that the father, you know, says, get the man a cup of coffee, you know, and, 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 and ask, you know, you have your own begonias in your own yard. You know what I mean? Like, like a lot of us looked up to that. And so, um, what was I going to say? Someone was going to say about, about, uh, looking up to that. Oh, the idea being that, okay, let's go with the notion that, that, that this, 
group of men, you know, is a minority of, of, of men, that doesn't mean that they're going to change their orientation just because the rest of the community is on ass backwards role reversal. What you're seeing now with the interracial dating, and yes, you can sprinkle the colorism and 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 being defeated in the media, not promoting black women's beauty, all that, yeah. We'll sprinkle that on top. But I'm saying, you know, at its at its core, you know, these issues that you're seeing with, you know, well-to-do brothers, upperly mobile black men, and then black women not knowing how to interact with them and thinking that, you know, like, like I am Eloho said, I treat black men and broke the same way I treat black men with money or the, or the way I treat black men with money is the same way I treat black men that are broke. Like chick, you don't ever do that. You don't ever do that. And so it, 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 it shows you that the level of one size fits all. And I'm like, that's a big mistake. And then lastly, and this point has to be made because this is where the white community has really fucked up. Right. Since they're the ones that are in charge, they bear the brunt of the blame. OK. And you see this with the way that young white people are talking about. OK, Boomer, there's tons of videos on YouTube uh, that white people have created talking about. OK, Boomer, you know, just looking at the cost of, of everything. Let's talk about evangelical Christians, for, for example, because evangelical Christians, they get on my nerves. They're retarded in their shit. Uh, some of them I just want to freaking punch in the face with the shit that they say but it's like you know they like say the problem with america is a lack of morality and we need to put jesus christ and the holy spirit back in the white house right that's what they say and i'm like in some places in america gas is fucking seven dollars a gallon your orientation with your abrahamic religion doesn't have a fucking thing to do with gas being seven dollars you know, a gallon. So you got people out here trying to make it and, you know, the markets are as such. It has nothing to do with your belief system. You know, again, you know, for the vast majority of people, the, the, the you know, they're only going to be as good as the world allows them to be. And, you know, some would argue, uh, just like that documentary I posted the other day about, you know, America is in decline economically speaking shit is too much shit is manufactured overseas the whole the dollar being strong that percent that 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 is an issue you know because in terms of paid labor for manufacturing producing goods it's going to cost companies more companies don't want to pay that they go overseas you know all this shit and so then you have the rising you know cost of education you know that has just i mean just inflated to a retarded bubble and number uh, you have student debt out the nose. You have the housing market. You know, it's like, oh, you know, uh, here's here's the dangling carrot of the 1950s model of being the leave it to beaver father, head of household, providing for your family, two cars, one for you and one for your wife, two kids, a cat and a dog and a house and a picket fence. Right. And, you know, back then. You had cars that cost. I don't know, a thousand dollars. You had homes that cost ten thousand dollars for the white people that got into Levittown, you know, on some, you know, Federal Housing Act uh, uh, situation, right? All this stuff. And now it's like, oh, you want to be a traditional man? You got to make well in the six figures. You got to make two hundred, three hundred thousand dollars a year. Oh, you know, you want to buy, you know, a house in the suburbs? Oh, pfft, half a million dollars starting price to have, you know, a four bedroom house and a two car garage. Half, half a million dollars. And so what ends up happening is when 80 percent of people can subscribe to the dream and only 20 percent of people can't, people are willing to accept that. Your standards will, will will be there, you know, again, going back to the evangelical Christians and their love of white Jesus and and and, and it's about morality. And that's what the problem with society is. They just completely ignore the economic component. If you pray hard enough, a job that'll pay you enough to pay off your student loans and buy a house in the suburbs and have two decent cars, you know, it'll happen for you. Again, the, the, the numbers don't add up. 
They don't add up. And so once that dream gets further and further away for people, people will begin to reject it. And those that are the 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 harbingers of the of the standards, you know, those are the who are the vanguards of the of those principles, you know, over time, they slowly begin begin to become more and more outnumbered. I mean, once you think about an evangelical Christian, you know, or any of these Christians or religious people, you know, talking about, you know, you know, America needs to look more like this. Make America great again. Right. All that Trump shit. But yet, even amongst them, you know, divorce rates are 40 percent, 50 percent. You see what I'm saying? See, you know, there might have been a time when people looked at them as, as, as more of a model or at least had some respect and say, you know what? I do see your lovely and your beautiful family. You know, that's a great thing. You know, but when you start looking at it and, you know, starting with the 70s, the divorce rates are down and whatnot. And then, you know, and this is where I will agree with these modern women and the feminist, yeah, p- patriarchy is set up in a way that once you don't, once you fail, like there's no place for, there's no place for a single mother to be equally as valued or recognized as a woman with, who's married, right? A woman with children who's married, right? Uh, you know, patriarchy doesn't have any place or have any value for men who are not productive, men who are not providing for a family. So again, when you start going back and you look through all the logistics, right, you start looking at the economy, how things are going, you know, how, you know, this is like the first generation that's doing worse than the previous generation, right? You got even young white people saying, okay, boomer. Right. Because, you know, they're like, oh, why can't you do this? And why can't you do that? And, and it's like, do you know how much that shit fucking cost? You know, we have the highest, you know, the, the, right now cars on average, people are keeping cars about 12 years, like 12.2 years. That's how long people are keeping cars for. Because they can't afford a new car. And especially with all the technology and everything that they're throwing into cars, Cars are even more expensive. Oh, we got to come standard with navigation, power windows, you know, analog brakes, fucking automatic transmission, uh, 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 you know, heated and cooled seats, all, all this, all this sorts of stuff. Right. And so gradually over time, and we're not talking luxury vehicles. A lot of that stuff now, what, what was in luxury vehicles 10 and 20 years ago is now pretty much standard in most vehicles. And, you know, that's going to have, you know, cost added to it. And when it comes to certain things, it just or the cost kind of shifts around, you know, where, OK, we don't put that in cars anymore. Like example, like when's the last time you see a you seen a car with a fucking ashtray in it? You know what I'm saying? Like like when's the last like my my grandfather, he had, you know, a Cadillacs at one time. And I remember in the back seat, they used to just have little freaking ashtray in it. Well, you don't even see ashtrays in cars. You you don't even see. I don't even think I got one in my vehicle. You know the damn um. What is this? The the DC the what is this DC current thing? You know the shit that you used to plug the damn uh, the shit for the smoke, the lighter. You know that you push in and shit like that. Like it, I have the plug so I can put electronic shit in there, but I don't have the actual thing with the smoking. You know with the little cigarette icon on it that they, I, it, it didn't come with the vehicle you know so you know certain things have changed but the overall point that i'm making is that if you have a system set up to where only a fraction of people can can actually achieve you know uh, uh you know the goal of the quote-unquote american dream they're going to start throwing it out amos wilson said the same thing Amos Wilson said the same thing when he said, if you have manhood training programs for black men and at the end of the day, you know, you know, uh, you know, they're still unemployed and underemployed, you know, eventually they're going to, you know, cast those values to the side because it doesn't benefit them. It does not benefit them. I mean, he said that point blank. You know, it's not just about just telling them, you know, what not to do, 
you know what I mean? And, 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 and these sort of ideas of manhood training, you know, if at the end of the day, it doesn't benefit them, it doesn't put them in a better situation. You know, we see this with the, you know, recently they had the cop, you know, in New York in the subway, you know, white people, they always, they always want to make it about out, about to be some sort of racial thing with zero context, but it was a black cop and a black teenager. And I actually commend the cop. You know what I mean? Because basically the black teenager, he, uh, you know, he, he jumped the, the fair, you know, and so the, they caught him. And what Cap tells me is a lot of time they just tell you to just go back, like go home. They're not going to arrest you. They're supposed to arrest them, but they won't do it because it's not worth it. You know what I mean? He go, OK, you keep him in jail for a day, da 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 like going through all that shit for and, and not only is he a juvenile, but, you know, um, you know, it's, it's just not even worth it. You know, and again, like to be it the fact that we have as a result of everything that we discussed on this channel, you know, how many of them are raised by single mothers? The mother can't even she's she's working some job. She can't even afford the shit. The father's not there to be a disciplinary. So the whole thing is just fucked up. Some of the costs are trying to get people break. Now you get these, you know, freaking law and order type of people just throw the throw throw them in jail and throw away the key as we've seen oh, since the freaking 80s that shit doesn't fucking work you know people will argue with that but i'm in agreement with the people that say that doesn't really work there's a lot of underlying issues that nobody wants to address which are directly tied to jobs and opportunities and shit like that that nobody wants to talk about right but anyway this cop didn't pull his gun he didn't pull his taser but you know that teenager was giving him the business because he definitely flipped him over you know he wasn't a small guy you know what i mean but they were going at it but the white media is gonna be like oh that's it that's why nobody's taking the subway people aren't taking the subway and 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 the, and the money is down not because of people getting attacked in the subway but because of the fucking pandemic and and all the regulations that the, that the liberals put up there and people started working from home and they're not trying to go back and 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 do all that rat race anymore Again, all you got to do is look at the number of people who have left New York and moved down, you know, to Florida and moved down to some of these more southern states where they can have a yard and they can have space and all that other shit. If you were making money, if you were living in New York and making money in New York, the the the, the only great thing that I really feel that exists about New York is you could pretty much pick up and go somewhere else if you saved up enough cuz New York is where people make money and you can go somewhere else and and it you're going to think you're going to be like, oh, my God, I, I've moved to Mexico because that's how cheap it is. You know, when I went down uh, uh, to Florida, you know, I was going to bars and they were giving me like these big freaking 16 ounce beers. You know what I mean? And I'm drinking like four or five of them, you know, slamming them down, having a good old time. You know, I get my tab at the end of the night. I'm like, oh, run that tab. You know, I'm all I'm all lit. You know what I mean? I pull out the tab. You must have given me somebody else's tab because it's only $21.35. You know what I mean? I'm, I'm wasted, right? And they're like, no, that's what the tab is. And I'm looking at the tab. It's got all the drinks I got, which are all beers. They were all like these, like, uh, what do you call them? Like, uh, freaking, you know, like custom beer. Not, you know, not, not like brewery type beers and shit like that. It's like four dollars and twenty five cents. I was like four dollars, four dollars. Nigga, I ain't seen four dollars for a beer in forever. Four dollars for it. for all that beer I drink. I was like, oh shit. I was like, you get a big tip and give you a big tip. You know what I mean? I was tipping the shit out of them. I keep keep the change. You know what I mean? Hell yeah. Cause I'm used to paying seven dollars a beer, nine dollars a beer. You know what I mean? And they come out and give you this little ass glass and shit. I'm like, God damn. I mean, for real? You know, and, and so uh anyway, what I'm saying is, you know, uh that uh people are not the, the, again, the, the New York tr transit, the subway, all that shit. That it that's been down since the pandemic started. Ain't got nothing to do with oh, people are getting attacked in the subways and all this shit. But anyway, I'm getting off, I'm getting off top. I'm not saying it's not a fa contributing factor, but it's not the main factor. Um, but the point that I was making is about how nothing has been set up for these young people, you know, and, 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 and yeah, the, the black community that's already on life support. Yeah. They're going to be the face of all this bullshit, 
right? Because they're, you know, more immediately impacted by it. But you're going to start seeing that shit with the white folks. I mean, isn't that what Antifa is? A bunch of white folks? Isn't that what the redneck rebellion is? Right? White folks. You're going to start seeing that. You know, when, when these white people start not being able to make it, again, these kids getting screwed over by their grandparents, you know, and, 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 and that whole carrot, you know, that's 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 the, like the, the, the beautiful thing for white supremacy about racism. You know, they can run this narrative because lazy black folks and, and there's opportunities out here and it's lazy black folks. Da, 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 da. But like when you start seeing young people, they can't make it. Young white people can't make it. What are you going to say? You're going to say they're lazy, too. I've seen some white people try it. I've seen some of them try it. I'm like, the shit don't pay anything. I was just watching some shit on uh, CB, CNBC or something like that. They were talking about the shortage the shortage of mechanics. And I'm sitting there, I'm like, it's about the money. I already know it's about the money. And they were bullshitting through the video. Da, 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 da. And the trade school, you know, going back to Mike Rowell and dirty jobs and all that stuff. Right? Yes, there is a perception about these, you know, blue collar jobs and what they actually pay for the ones that actually pay like welding and shit like that. Those ones actually pay, you know, or, or these sort of vocational jobs that, you know, they, they, they took auto shop out of school. They took wood shop out of carpentry out of school and shit. We call it wood shop, but I'm saying they took all that shit out of school. Every, everything is go to college, go to a four year institution, get yourself in goo gobs of debt. And then when you get out, you know what I mean? They only want to pay you about $40,000 a year. Yeah. Right? Yeah. So so you got all these vocational jobs that nobody wanted to work. The young men didn't want to work it because it didn't have any prestige. China had the same problem, which is why recently they tried to combine, you know, their prestigious universities. This is why they had all the student protests, you know, uh, before the pandemic, because they were trying to combine the universities. They were like, yo, we need some vocational trades people. We need people with those type of skills. We need machinists and, 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 you know, those type of technical people to run our CNC machines and shit like that. And then they didn't have them. And the reason they didn't have them, because everybody, you know, remember, China's got that women male, you know, ratio issue. Right. So if you want to get a bitch in China, you know, you got to be an awesome Chinese male. Right. And and, and so you got to have high status and go to the right school and everything. That's why you see all the Chinese people coming to America trying to get their degrees. I went to a school in America. Right. That, like, that's why they are doing all that shit. Right. They don't want to go to, you know. Oh, what do you do? Oh, I I work with my hands. Like society's got a big issue with that. I don't know why, but that whole not that not having prestige. So what they're trying to do? They combine their their school. Like it, it would be like if the United States if we took Harvard and combined it with DeVry. The Harvard students would be like, no, you're devaluing my degree. So that's what that well, that's what the protests were. Right? So the cops went in there, they was beating up on the students and shit. The students was like, the students was like, fuck that. No, I want my shit to be exclusive. You're bringing down the value. I'm paying all this money. No, no, you can't do this. This is going to directly affect my ability to get married and settle down because women only want to date the top 10% of men, especially in China, because we, because due to our one child policy, we have a fucked up female to male ratio. And so only the best of the best get a woman. Everybody else. That's why they got them nets and them iPhone factory shit. They got nets and shit to prevent the, the the young men that come from the villages that don't have the opportunity to get an education and work in these phone factories from committing suicide and throwing themselves over the damn balconies and shit. So, what was I saying? I got off topic, but the fact of the matter is, is eventually people start waking up to the fact that the carrot that was dangling over everybody's head is unobtainable. And they're not just going to allow you to say, you know, that you ain't shit. And so a lot of the forming of Voltron that you see with all these subgroups and, you know, all these different factions is all a part of creating eliminating the old value system, the old quote unquote 
patriarchal value system. And that's when it comes to manhood, when it comes and it spills into other areas. It's not just about, you know, you know, single mothers should be on par with, you know, uh, married women, you know, because there's more single mothers out here than there are married women. No, it starts spilling into other areas like beauty, you know, body positivity, you know. So 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 you start having this slow erosion of all standards across the board. You know, next thing you're going to be telling me, you know, an, an, an A student and an F student are the same thing. You know, what I mean? like so you, you can get into ridiculous areas when it comes to this shit. Just ridiculous. You're like, well, wait, 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 I, I feel you on this right here. But I'm like, really, you going to eliminate all standards? Yes. Yes. Because, again, you know, how do you how do you talk about, you know, discrimination or talk about, you know, value if and say, well, this is value, but this is not. It's the same thing that people took issue with, with Clarence Thomas talking about, we must examine, you know, a uh, gay marriage because of whatever the technicality is in the flaw in the law or whatever. Uh, but then people are like, yeah, nigga, but what about your marriage with your white woman? Lovings v. Virginia. Remember that? Maybe we should consider that unconstitutional, even though the issue is, is that it was underneath a different clause. You know, the um, the equal protections clause, I think, under the 14th Amendment versus what the abortion was, which was the Fifth Amendment in the privacy clause, where it should have never been in the first place. And there should have been a law to back abortion, you know, because I'm, I'm neither for or against it like that. I do think women are fighting to be sexually responsible, but I'm saying create a bill and a law and go from there. But no, they had 50 years to do that and didn't do that. I just had to get on my soapbox about that because I can't, I can't, I, I hate having to keep repeating that. But yeah. Um, um, yeah. I mean, this is, this is where, this is where we are. It took a while to, to get to here and understand it. But after having back and forth conversations with Captain Solo about this and really looking at it, it's like the issue is, you know, the recognition, you know, the, the, these modern women, they want the recognition that, that they're, you know, they can't get underneath patriarchy because, you know, men, we just don't view them in that way. We, we don't. We have our own hierarchies and our own you know, criteria, our own standards. And, you know, for a lot of men, it just comes down to, you know, but can you beat my ass? Men are that way when it comes to each other. Can you beat my ass? If you can't beat my ass, then go shut the fuck up. You know what I mean? And women, they don't understand that. They kind of run around with the, well, I'm a woman and that means you won't put hands on me, yada, yada, yada. And I'm like, look, chick, there is a line that you can cross where a man can and will put hands on you and other men are not going to come to the rescue. They're going to look at this shit like, well, she had that coming and you run around being like, but that's because he think it's a week and everything. No. Again, it depends on the situation and what's going on. You know, it depends, you know, how, how men gauge that. It's not always just Women are right no matter what, no matter what they do, how foul they are, you know, what whatever lines they cross, and she doesn't have an ass whooping coming. Y'all need to get that out of your head. But because they run around with the, I'm a woman, I will never be touched, and I'm out here, I'm challenging all of these, all of these value systems that I just get to basically bitch until I get my way. And that's going to be the end of it. I'm like, no, it's not going to be the end of it. You know what I'm saying? Like, 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 like men kill each other when it comes to, you know, their standards and what they believe on the regular. And so women have no place in that. You know, I hate to point out like just how powerless women are in that regard, but they really are. The shit that goes down, men allow it to happen. That's just the reality of it. This is no different than the position that black people are in right now in America. If white people wanted to say, black people, report back to your slave quarters tomorrow, what would black people, what would we do? Call upon the military that we don't have? Call upon all the black people that you got to fight with about supporting the Second Amendment? Like, what would we do? If they said, we're going to enslave black people tomorrow because we fucking feel like it. 
the white people outnumber us five to one. What would we do? Right? It wouldn't even be a it wouldn't even be a battle, it wouldn't even be a war. You know, all they gotta do is just stand in front of the supermarkets with AR 15s and wait till we starve to death. Literally. You know what I mean? Then black people be run, probably running around begging to be slayed. Oh, master. Oh, please, master. Uh, just for, for a chicken sandwich. Oh, please, master. Oh, let me. I'll be your slave if I can, if I can eat. That's all they got to do. I mean, that's a big, you know, wild hypothetical. But I'm just saying that is the reality of, of the situation that we're in as black people. You know, certain things are not in your favor. And when it comes to women and women asserting themselves, the shit is not in their favor. You know, so I'm just I'm just saying so I don't I don't know how this can be fixed. You know, um, I think that, again, as long as the economic issue is what it is, as long as you have so many people failing and and and, you know, in the past where you had, let's just art say an 80% success rate, like 80% of people could make it, especially after World War II. You know, it's like, what, what, you know, Cap talked about, you know, Detroit, like a black man could literally say, fuck you, GM, I quit. Walk across the street into Chrysler and get another job and start the following day. A black man could literally do that in Detroit. In, you know, let's say 19, 19, you know, you know, 48. Because everything was manufactured in the U.S. There was that much work to go around and he could provide for a family. I mean, Detroit was probably one of the first cities that had a, a, a true strong rise of a black middle class like that. You know, especially when Cap tells me about even even in the, you know, the, the, the early 70s, when he tells me about, you know, his childhood and shit. Most of the black men, if not all of them, in, in 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 any particular neighborhood, the shit looks all dilapidated now. But those neighborhoods had fathers in the home. They worked in the plant. They worked for the UAW. You know what I mean? They got damn good wages, full medical and dental. You know what I mean? On the, you know, if they wanted to work on Sundays, you know, freaking double time. You know what I mean? They wanted to work overtime, time and a half. You know what I mean? Like like you know, I mean cap ha, cap. He was going to school with with girls that had cars. Their fathers bought them cars at 16. Those black girls were living good because you had the auto industry there. That's dead. That's gone now. So now what do you have in Detroit? We all know what we have in Detroit, right? Decay, crime, poverty, single mother homes. That's what exists. So if I got a community now that's 80% single mothers, what patriarchal anything am I going to be able to sell? This is why you had the woman that told Cap, she was like, that Cosby show shit, that shit just wasn't real. It wasn't real. It was it was real to me because I grew up in a suburban household, you know, with, you know, two parents and whatnot. Right? It was it was it was closer to how I was existing then, you know, people who grew up in poverty in a, in a single mothered home, like those children that were in that 1986 uh, Newark uh, video. So, in other words, once the once the American dream is dead, once people can't and I'm not I don't, I don't even believe that most people you got some people that they just really didn't want to do that. But you would have to be. It's kind of like you would have to be an asshole. It's like, you know, I had supportive parents growing up. For me, like, I remember my dad said this to me one time. He was like, you know, you know, um, you know, you basically was just saying, like, that I was a really good kid. And I was like, what makes you say that? He was like, nah, you know, I got friends. Like, they tell me stories. You know, he's got, you know, friends that he still talks to and you know they talk about their kids and a lot of their kids are really fucked up and he was like i never had to pick you up from the police station at three o'clock in the morning i was like yeah that's true you never did you know like i never got i never got in trouble i never got arrested none of that shit so my dad like he just kind of like 
gave me a pat on the back about that. Like I never had to like, like in other words, you saved your mother and I a lot of stress because we didn't have to go through bullshit with you. But I'm like, I told him, I was like, dad, but you know, the lifestyle that I was afforded, you know, from, you know, you and mom, like I would have had to been an asshole to go out there. Like y'all out here, you know, buying me cars and, 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 and freaking high school and shit like that. Like, I was appreciative of the shit. You know what I mean? I'm, I'm like, shit, they, you know, they out here busting their ass so that I could have, the least I could do is not get in trouble or do some shit that's going to have them all jammed up. You know what I mean? So that's just how I looked at it. I know you had some people, I remember them, some of the white boys, the parents was rich and they were out there getting caught, you know, you know, smoking weed, drug charges, all of the type of shit that they were getting jammed up with, racing their cars, crashing their cars. Hell, one of them died, you know, cause he freaking had a Mustang and crashed that bitch, ran, ran wrapped that bitch around a fucking tree. You know what I mean? Got ejected from the damn vehicle. You know what I mean? Like, you know, and, and that was like the, I think that was like the third, that was the third, he got, to, he got, he got arrested twice. He got one DUI. He got arrested an, a, a, another time, um, for racing. But then that third time that was, that was it. You know what I mean? He didn't get any other chances after that. That, I mean, that, 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 that shit, he split that bitch in half. That shit was that one car, one side of the car, the front was on one side of the street. The other one was on the other, it was on, I don't even know how it got on the other side of the street, but the, the rear end of the car was just on the other side of the road. It was like, damn, like how fucking fast do you got to go to split a fucking vehicle in half? You know, but anyway, um, just saying, you know, so yeah, I, I, I personally believe that. You know, if, if people have a solid foundation, you know, this is people always want to throw the exceptions at you. I'm like, nah, I'm, y'all can say what you want. Two parent homes are more effective than single parent homes. You know why? Because a parent can't be in, in more than one place. They can't be at work and be at home at the same time. Two parents, you can swap it out. You know what I'm saying? Like, like the, the one parent at least gets a break. So if we don't have intact homes, if people are out here and they can't make it and they don't want to be judged, yeah, like all the all the rhetoric that you're hearing, that's what you're going to hear. All this pushback, all this we need different value systems and everything should be accepted. Yeah, I bet everything, you know, they feel that everything should be accepted because it's it, it you know, what, what is this person supposed to do? Sit there and say, Oz ain't shit. Like, how is that supposed to work? Because it, because a lot of the stuff, a lot of the situations, especially the situations with babies, they're permanent situations. Maybe that's the only permanent situation. You know, or, or, or even situations where a person's, you know, they're like, look, I'm I'm at a particular age and I'm not making X amount of money and I don't have the skills and I don't see how I'm going to do that. And I don't need you reminding me of how much of a fucking failure I am. You see, so, you know, they push back. You know, Cap talked about this when he talked about, you know, guys that, you know, start creeping up around, you know, uh, his age and they get in their 50s and. You know, they really haven't accomplished shit, you know, and and then you start getting into age discrimination at the workplace. Nobody wants to hire you because in part your temperament is is a little bit different because you're not going to accept the bullshit that a 22 year old would accept. 22 year old. Oh, oh yeah, yeah, yeah. Let me do this. Right. Because they still believe in the fucking carrot. You know what I mean? But a 50 something year old, you know what I mean? All they're thinking about is freaking retirement. You know what I mean? They're not trying to do extra credit. You know what I mean? They're not, they're not hungry. You know what I mean? Especially in, in, in sales and shit like that. They're not hungry. So there's all type of other stuff that goes on. And, you know, I guess this is just an inevitability when it comes to how all this is going to play out. Like once you get past that critical mass and you don't have a, 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 a reasonable path for 80% of people to be successful 
And then you start creeping down to where only 20% of people are successful. It's like the, the reciprocal fraction of 80-20. And now you're at 20-80, 20% successful, 80% failing. Hell no, people aren't going to, aren't going to, uh, uh, you know, hold up those old values that they can no longer, you know, obtain because of cost and opportunity. And the people on the far right, they, they, they're going to continue to do it for until it really starts to impact the white community. They're going to keep doing it for like another like 10 years or so till it really starts hitting them. Which is they're going to be up there. See, it's all about hard work. And so the problem is these young people, they're lazy and they haven't been taught anything about about discipline and, and, and hard work. You know, they, they, they're going to just keep pounding that dead horse. And I'm like, look around you. you what, what, when you were growing up, there were manufacturing jobs. Now all that shit is dried up. What are you talking about? How, like, how do you not see that? Every city that you go to, that's what you see. Abandoned factories. Right? Same thing with the infrastructure. Bridges. Remember that bridge in, what was it, the one that was going over the Missouri River? That shit collapsed. Was that in Ohio? What state was that in? That bri when that bridge collapsed, all them people were on that bridge, and that shit just collapsed and shit. You know what I mean? I don't know what planet these people, what the planet these people live on, and some of it has to do with just the concept of being white. You know, white people they think that they that they're that they hold the mantle of responsibility. You know, when it comes to you know what it is to be an American, and and you know because you know, they're members of the dominant society, they tend to feel the impacts of shit and the shifts last. And, and, and when they start feeling it, you know what you got on your hands? A revolution. Because white people got more entitlement than anybody. That's when you start seeing them, you know, marching on the Capitol and all that shit, which we've already seen. That's why, they, in my opinion, why they want to take people's guns away. It's not because of mass shootings. You know what I'm saying? Even the mass shootings, you know, I believe that to be a part of, you know, the same thing that I'm talking about. All these young white men that don't have a positive white male identity, they don't see that they can make it. You know what I mean? There, there is no space for them, at least with black people. Black people came up with a hundred and a million and one coping mechanisms, right? Where we, you know, we got a whole subculture which is like open door, which is why you see all these other groups. You see hood Asians and hood Hispanics and, you know, obviously hood black people, hood white boys. Uh, you know, that's why you got little rappers like well, Slim Jesus and all that other stuff. That's like, it just, it's like an open door policy, right? Hey, hey, if you're downtrodden and you don't have shit, hey, come on in. Come on in, white boy. Come on in, Hispanic dude. Come on in, Asian guy. Come on in, right? And so you get into, you know, again, all the street culture, hyper masculinity and whatnot, because it's a new system that's outside the confines of, you know, white dominated society. But, you know, as a rule, uh, a lot of the white community and the Hispanic community doesn't really have that. I mean, not the Hispanic community, the Asian community. The Asian community, damn sure don't have it. You not go to college, you ain't shit. You know, that's just the end of it. <laughs> like, you just ain't shit. Which is why, what do you see in the Asian community? Higher suicide rates, right? Um, and then when in, in, the, in the white community... What do you see with them? You don't you don't see you. You see higher suicide rates when it comes to white men. I think it's like above the age of 50. Right. But they tend to have higher suicide rates across the board. But in addition to the higher suicide rates, what else do you see? You see, uh, you know, the mass shootings because they're like, fuck this world. I'm taking motherfuckers with me. Ah! You know, they, they, they own some crazy shit. You know, with black people, you don't see that with black people because black people have emotional support systems and emotional support groups where, hey, you know, pop that molly, pop them drinks. Hey, we're all fucked up over here. We don't need to go to the club. We just going to get in, a, you know, pull up at a mall in a parking lot, 
you know, show off our cars that we bought with our drug money and shit like that. And, you know, we going to chill out here. Got my bitch right here. You know what I mean? Same thing. Females on the same thing. Right. You know, uh, you know, like that's like, what's that song called? You know, the one with the ratchet chicks out there twerking and everything talking about I'm single as fuck, you know, same shit. You know, I'm just like, hey, I'm not going to be I'm not going to be a doctor. I'm not going to be, you know, you know, some some profession like this. This is what the fuck I am. And then it just slowly over time, it starts looking like, you know, Mad Max and the Road Warrior. That's what it starts looking like. Chicks out here start looking like Tina Turner and shit, you know, you know, wearing chain mail and shit like that. Like that's that's what the shit starts looking like. You know, and. uh you know, that's where things go. People are not going <clears> to <throat> people are not going to live up to a standard that they can't meet and then look themselves in the mirror and say, I ain't shit. They're going to they're going to create an alternative, you know, that makes them feel comfortable, that makes them feel right. You know, it, whatever. Call it a coping mechanism. Can't even talk. Call it a coping mechanism. I'm saying that that's what the brain. That's what the human brain is going to do. It's going to protect itself. It's not just going to sit there and, 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 you know, fall into, uh, what's the word that I'm looking for? You know, fall into deep depression. I'm saying, I think black people are deal with it a little bit better. Just, I'm saying just a little bit, because we do have a lot of unresolved issues, unresolved anger issues and whatnot, you know, but we tend not to mope as hard as other groups do. Other groups tend to mope real hard. We, we tend not to mope. Because, again, we're already outside, essentially, the, the mainstream society. The mainstream society was never an option for us, right? I'm saying that, you know, collectively speaking. And so we already said fuck the system a long time ago because the system said fuck us. Where other groups, it may take them more time, you know, to recognize, like, hey, this isn't working for me. And when it doesn't work for them... Some of them may, you know, they may fuck that man. I, I hang around with black people. Right. But other ones, they'll just, you know, start, you know, the demons start to take fold. They, you know, the anger and all that shit and thinking, you know, all type of fucked up shit. And then a mass shooting happens. And then, you know, the media wants to sit there and big the person up, you know, make them famous. And then they start getting the idea in their head and, Maybe I should go buy an AR-15 and then they show up in a mall, you know, and start shooting the place up. Or they show up on 4th of July and start shooting the place up. Or they go into a church and start shooting the place up. Or they find themselves in those echo chambers on the Internet, you know, where they start blaming other people. Oh, see, you know, the problem is the, the niggas is out here breathing up all the white man's air with the flared African nostrils. Yeah, that's what the problem is. Yeah, maybe we should do something about it. You know, they're trying to replace us. See, you know, I, you know, and, and, and it becomes this big problem. You know, I see these black rappers on TV. You know, they got all this money. I ain't got no money. I'm over here. I'm poor. Wow, I should be living like that. I'm a white man. You know, all that shit. And the next thing you know, they shooting the fucking top supermarket up. You see? And the crazy thing is, is like, he was in college, too engineer smart guy so you know i'm like you know what else is going on there i could only speculate but i don't know you guys let me know what you think in the comment section about everything that i said uh you know but these are my thoughts on it you know the fact that you know once you get past that critical mass of failing people you know, you're not going to be able to uphold, you know, the the old values and standards from the system when it was actually working for most people. And I think that's the biggest mistake that a lot of these people that like to talk about, you know, traditional values or old school values. That's the mistake that a lot of us have made in not realizing that most people out here aren't making it like that. The shit's not working for them. And that's the reason why they're rejecting it. And then not only that, that's why they're trying to get, you know, everybody else to change their belief systems. Because they're not just going to, you know, 
exist out here. You know, only 10 percent of people are eating and only 10 percent of people are, you know, uh, you know, living good and living well. And the standard of living for them is awesome. But for everybody else is shit. And then have to sit there and listen to them talk about how, well, you you ain't shit because you're not you're not us. You know, again, you know, that 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 elite class can hide when they have a buffer class. But the stupid thing is what the white elites have done is they've essentially eliminated their own buffer class. So now it's just them and the poors. So now it's just it's just them, you know, walking around, you know, the savannah with a lamb of rack around the, uh, uh, excuse me, a rack of lamb around their neck. I'm like, OK, lions is going to get you. Ooh, and I can't wait until it gets dark because guess what? They can see in the dark and you can't, but they can smell you. You know, not only see you, but smell you. I'm like, I'm like, y'all are idiots, man. Idiots. You know, and, and I'm going to tell you what's going to happen in the end. It's good. All of it's going to collapse. And then the white elites, because they have hoarded substantial amounts of wealth, they're going to get in their Dr. Claw chair and pet their cat. <laughs> They're going to pet their cat and then they're going to unleash the muhaha plan, new world order. Right. They're going, to, they're going to let it get so bad that people are begging them for a solution. And then they're going to come out like Senator Palpatine, you know, with supreme emergency powers. Yes, yes. Just destroy the Constitution. Rip it up. Flush it down the toilet. Yes, yes, yes. We must ban all guns. Yes, yes, yes. You must give me all supreme emergency power. We're going to come up with a new currency that is ultimately controlled by me. You can only use this new cryptocurrency. You know, I mean, I mean, it's, I mean, it's just going to be the most evilest shit you will ever fucking see. Muhaha, muhaha. And 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 the fucked up part is people will will love them for bringing order back into their lives even though they've essentially given up more freedom. You know, and then they will die and then the new generation will only know the new system. They will only know that system is one of the reasons why, you know, concepts of freedom in the West versus concepts of freedom in Asia are completely different. Talk to an Asian person about the Second Amendment and and exercising weapons and shit like that. A lot of them, they're very uncomfortable with that idea. You know. The, the fighting the, wait the, the, the government or, or 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 those in positions of authority what was challenging them no 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 we could you know the, the please <clears throat> but anyway um yeah I, I i made this video long enough that is all i gotta say uh let me know what your thoughts are uh don't forget to like comment share and subscribe that's my video swpo and let me just give one last final word for completion. Um, and a lot of that, you know, a lot of this pushback that we see, it does start with the beauty issue. A lot of black women feel largely rejected by mainstream society, which isn't even controlled by black people when it comes to the definition of their beauty that they themselves and many black men have subscribed to, you know, these ideas of what is beautiful. And if you are, you know, a, 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 a non-racially ambiguous black woman, uh, I mean, it's, it's like there's not even a place for their beauty to be defined. And it seems like nobody wants to define it. And if they do want to define it, it, it seemingly you know, always some watered down version of what a black woman is. Um, and then you have those that just, you know, the argument will just go around in circles about, you know, whether a woman is, is truly attractive enough or whether somebody's trying to present an ugly girl argument or, you know, whether black beauty can even be defined. And so I'm saying, however you want to dice it, uh, you're going to have women who just 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 right from go. You know, right from 
the conception of this nation, you know, black women have basically felt uh, that their beauty wasn't recognized. So in my opinion, that just further accelerates or exacerbates a lot of the shit, you know, with, you know, folks that, you know, once they feel outside the system, well, I'm going to define it by my own terms or try to get everybody else to reject uh, not just what the dominant society has to say about, you know, the beauty, but also just reject the dominant society as a whole and reject all forms of standards being established that are discriminatory and uh, exclusionary. And so I'm just adding this to the video to point out uh, that there's a number of black women who who feel this way. And, you know, to them, you know, that's where it starts. It starts with the beauty aspect and then it rolls into the other things. You know, not only are you not beautiful, you know, you're fat or not only are you not beautiful, you're not wealthy or you didn't come from the right class or the pedigree or um, you're a single mother or, um, you know, you're you're not married, you know, and, you know, the list just goes on and on as it pertains to you know, a woman's value, especially a black woman. And then you can see how, you know, starting there rolls into all these other areas of, you know, wanting to be recognized, uh, you know, wanting to, uh, you know, join forces with the LGBT community. Right. And then you can see how, you know, it can, it can, you know, get, extremely radical but at the same time i do understand where it comes from i'm not going to sit here and pretend you know understanding all this that i that i can't comprehend how and why they feel the way that they do i'm just saying that's kind of like where things begin to snowball it begins in the beauty area and then it rolls into you know all these other areas smash the patriarchy you know, this is a problem. That is a problem. We need to have a new way of defining things. You know, that's that. That's just saying that's just the origins of it. And, you know, I don't know what the alternative is. You know, I think that the the details on how you would get men to be equally as productive in a situation that they don't control. Um, I think that there's a lot of magical thinking as it pertains to, you know, the black women of thinking how things would go down. Like, you know, they just think that, well, you just need to get off of the shit that the white boys are on and be on this shit. But then they don't detail any of the stuff that pertains to what would even motivate a man to man to operate, you know, on that paradigm. And then things that would be beneficial or advantageous to men would still be labeled underneath white supremacist capitalist or patriarchal or whatever. Like, so basically anything that the women don't like, it'll be re swiftly rejected with, well, that's patriarchy. You're trying to come with those patriarchal stand, uh, standpoints or you're trying to inject that. You're still, you're still stuck on that. And, and there's aspects of it where it's like, uh, yeah, okay, I might be able to see what you're talking about. But then when you really walk through the details, it ends up looking like, OK, you want something for nothing and I don't get anything out of it. And I'm supposed to participate in this new paradigm. And so at that point, men don't have any other alternative black men other than to walk away. I'm saying even if you were open to an alternative, you know, there's you know, because the women want to label so much of it as oppression, next thing you know, you find yourself in a space where there's absolutely nothing in there that's beneficial to you. You know, they don't want to, they don't want to acknowledge, you know, what you do. They don't want to sing your praises. You know, they don't want to operate on, you know, you know, you, you know, any, any concept of you're better than they are. Right. Even though a lot of the responsibilities and burdens of being a man are still going to be there. Like this shit really hasn't been sorted out, which is in, in part why a lot of what is being presented is being strongly rejected. Aside from, you know, all of the, you know, the homophobic statements that women make, you know, the minute that, you know, you don't, 
you know, operate to their specifications. That's what I find so funny about a lot of the LGBTQ stuff, you know, that, you know, that women advocate for. You need to define a different way to define yourself as a man. And then as soon as a man, you know, operates on a situation that either she can't control or doesn't, you know, wholly benefit her, the first thing out of her mouth is, you know, that nigga's weak, that nigga's gay. You know, she starts attributing, you know, f feminine traits to him as an insult. You know, that that's what that's what's so funny about the shit. You know, we hate, you know, uh, misogyny and it should be all about gender equality. And then as soon as a man doesn't do what they want, you fucking pussy, you pussy ass coward. It's like, whoa, whoa, whoa. Now, all of a sudden, you're her genitalia. You know, but five minutes ago, it was there's no difference between vaginas and penises. You see what I'm saying? Like, so I'm still with the men on, you know, the majority of this. I'm like, nah, y'all, y'all ain't y'all not presenting anything that I would want to participate in. You know, just saying you're not pre you're not presenting anything that I would want to be a part of. Uh, because at the end of the, again, it's like, we're going to change all of this to be exclusively beneficial to us and you men are going to like it. And we're not going to talk about what's in it for you because anything that you want us to do or anything that is attached to what's in it for you is oppression and we're going to label it as oppression. And so we can, we should be able to expect everything and you should be able to expect nothing. Because all of that is oppression. You see what I'm saying? So it just doesn't go anywhere. And it just leads to uh, a male exodus in a situation where, you know, men not participating or men not doing the right thing in the community uh, is very much a problem. So you're kind of like back to square one, back to a broken situation. That's now, you know, being reinforced with men not wanting to participate in the alternatives that are being presented. I know I most certainly don't want to participate in it. Captain Solo doesn't want to participate in it. You know, like we said, you know, he's just put us in a museum. You know, if this is the way that things are going. But anyway, I just wanted to add that. That's all I got to say. That's my video. SWP out. Don't forget to like, share and subscribe.